Hello, Melinda and Lisa. We're letting people get on uh, Facebook Live here. We're going to start a prayer meeting at 6 o'clock. So I'm just getting prepared. Um, thanks for watching. And Melinda, it's not showing on this uh, laptop. I have a great wife making adjustments on the fly. Is that good? Thank you for the thumbs up. Glad you're going to pray with us. Hey, Ollie. Glad you're joining our prayer meeting. Hey, Miss Cheryl. Glad you're watching. We're going to do a prayer meeting. Glad you're here. We're going to start here shortly with our Ensley First Baptist Church prayer meeting. We'll start in two minutes and give people a chance to come on board. Hey, George. What's going on, brother? Could use you here, George, to play some guitar, but uh, maybe another time. And he turned that one down because it's, it's giving me an echo. Now would be a good time to uh, get your cup of coffee or something to drink. We start in approximately two minutes still. Six o'clock. definitely a new thing for me uh, of course videos aren't but this is uh, because of the virus because of the quarantine my family's in a quarantine right now um, this is new so y'all pray for me as we go through this prayer meeting um, I'm glad I can see who's checking in what's going on Mark tell Deb I said uh, we love her we love you too George love all y'all go ahead and uh, if you want, start a watch party, get this thing shared, because we're going to pray to Jesus Christ together, and we're going to look at God's Word together. And again, pray for me, because this is weird. I ain't going to lie. I'm not used to doing a prayer meeting in front of a phone, but uh, it's a blessing that we can get God's Word out and pray together in times like this. Hey, Sherry, I need better uh, glasses, I guess. I can barely see the names. Well, I guess at six o'clock we'll get started, and I wanna I want us to pray. Let me turn this music off, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started. But first, let me uh, run through uh, a little list I have here. Who else just jumped on? Brandon Camp, hey son. Y'all, uh, so glad you're watching. So,
prayer meeting for Ensley First Baptist Church. I don't know if this has ever been done before, but we're doing it now. And I wanted to do this at the church. Give me a thumbs up, y'all, if you can hear me okay. Hey, Robert. Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me okay. Hey, Jennifer. Wow, thank y'all for watching. Awesome, awesome. If the, is, the, uh, is the picture pretty good? I'm concerned about the Wi-Fi a little bit too. Just pray that nothing goes wrong with that. So, we come to do our first ever Facebook Live prayer meeting. I'm so glad y'all are attending. Hey, Sonia. And um, let's start this prayer meeting before I go to the devotion with a prayer and some, some items I want to cover, a little list that God has laid on my heart. So I can't see you, but I'm going to ask you to bow your head with me and pray for me as we go through this time. Maybe it'll be fun. And let's, let's go. Here we go. Let's bow our heads. Here we go. Father in heaven, we come to you in Jesus' name. We enter to your gates with thanksgiving and to your courts with praise. We are thankful unto you and we bless your holy name. Lord, I'm thankful that the church family is joining in here. I'm thankful that others are joining in. Lord, anybody that you want to watch this, Lord, either now or later, I pray that you'd be glorified tonight, Jesus. I ask Jesus that you would help us. Pray that your Holy Spirit would just take over this entire prayer meeting. Lord, help me not to worry about the method or how this is unfolding, but just to do what you've called me to do, to share your gospel, to share your love, to share the way of salvation, and to pray with your people. So Lord, please help us now as we go forward with this meeting. We love each other, Jesus. If ever there was a time to keep prayer going, it is now. Please, Holy Spirit, take over. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's children said, uh, amen. For an amen, give me a, uh, I don't know, a praying hands, a positive emoji, if you would, please. And there's my baby girl. Hey, Ash, glad you're watching. We've got some Presbyterians in the house. That's very cool. So I'm in the uh, undisclosed location, the dungeon, the basement, doing the first ever uh, Ensley First Baptist Church Facebook Live prayer meeting. And so um, I want you to pray for me as we move through this process. Um, because I want to just get so lost in the word and in prayer that I'm not even concerned about the method here or the strangeness strangeness of this of this process i also want you to pray that there be zero zero distractions um hey jam zero distractions and so what do i mean most of you know i'm taking some precautions we have a ginormous mindy has a ginormous bull mastiff and he is outside. He ain't coming in. He'd be plowing through this thing, trying to get some love. We're not going to do that. Plus, I have kids. So I've banned the kids. They're, the prayers are rising, and they're right above me in their room. They're not in trouble. I just said, don't come down. So pray that there's no phone calls that come in where I have to mess with the phone. Pray there's no texts that come in. If you're watching this, don't text me. Okay? Um, so just pray on my end and at your end that there's no distractions okay we don't want uh, to the prayer or the study to be interrupted and the enemy would love to do that so pray against satan as we move forward also um, this of course is a facebook live prayer meeting until it's safe to gather again in the first baptist church and others until it's safe for us to gather again we're going largely on what the Holy Spirit is guiding us through the information we gain from the county. And Travis, thank you, Travis Tompkins, is doing a great job of sharing that information uh, with us. Hey, Sharon. I think that's, no, that's a shame. Sorry, I have bad eyes, so if I get that wrong. So bottom line is um, we're going to do this prayer meeting Facebook Live until uh, we get the green light that all is clear and then we'll go back. And why? Because uh, as we prayed and as the church leadership talked with some of the, our elderly and even myself with asthma, we don't want to put ourselves, those of us that, are, that have underlying issues, at risk. Uh, and this is a nasty sickness. And some of you know that we have gone through 
uh, a sickness here and we're going through it as we speak as a matter of fact so if you would like to have others watch this now would be a good time before we get to the study and the prayer to go ahead and start a watch party or share this and that will help us get the gospel out that will help us pray and um, I'm humbled that y'all are even here uh, to, to help me pray we're doing this together and um, I'm thankful very thankful that y'all are, are helping me with this okay so uh, so share this even now if you want to or after the fact because of course it'll st stay on our it'll stay on our Facebook page so then it can be shared later the gospel's going out and in the times we live in that's exactly what needs to happen the gospel of Jesus Christ he's the Savior he's the way the truth and the life we need to get that message out Christians we have got to get that message out because because time is short and we need to lead people to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ so you might want to find a quiet place right now if you can um, we will do a, a Bible study, if you can believe this, I don't know if I can pull it off, somewhere between 10 and 15 minutes. We're going to take a break from Isaiah Church family and do some topical issues for the next two weeks. And so, hey mom, glad you're watching. And so, hey Roger. So the bottom line is, uh, uh, what was I saying? 10 to 15 minute Bible study we're about to go into here in a few minutes. So you're going to need... Of course you're going to need, you always need, go get your Bible. Get your Bible with you as we get ready to go into God's Word. And we're going to ask the Holy Spirit to speak to each one of us individually uh, throughout this devotion. We're asking the Holy Spirit of God to be their teacher today. I'm, I'm, I don't even come close. I just want to be uh, here to share the Word, and then we want the Holy Spirit to speak to us. Hey, Ruby, really glad you're watching. Hey, Travis. So get your Bible. Big time, big time important, get your Bible. Get a pen, as I say in church, or get a pencil, get a notepad. So maybe you can jot down what the Holy Spirit is saying to you. Give me a thumbs up, everybody, if it's still coming through clear. Wi-Fi is clicking good. Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me okay. And that would encourage me to know to keep going. And even if it's not, guess what? I'm going forward anyway. But just pray that it continues to work good. Also, normally... When we meet at the church, many of you know, we have, thank you for the thumbs up. Normally we have a lot of dialogue back and forth with our, with our Bible studies, with our prayer meetings. So obviously that's going to be difficult here tonight. Uh, but I have some solutions to the dialogue. Even though I can't hear you, you already are dialoguing and, and helping me with some thumbs up and some emojis. And I absolutely appreciate that. So please insert... Uh, your, uh, your, your thoughts or what's on your mind, uh, start by telling me, maybe you could type in where you're at. I'm in an undisclosed location in the bunker, in this basement, in quarantine. If you'd have told me a month ago that me and Mindy would be in quarantine, I, I would struggle to believe that. But it's, in, it's, a, it's in, uh, in fact happening as we speak. So, uh, Type in so I can check it out later, or maybe I can see it now. Maybe you're at home, maybe you're at work. Uh, you don't have to be too specific, but just tell me where you're at. Dialogue with me. Add a Bible verse as we dialogue. When I watch uh, and listen and learn from Bob Murphy on Tuesday morning, or Gary Grimes at our adult Sunday school class on Sunday, I'll take my iPad, and if a Bible verse comes to mind as they're speaking, I like to add to the conversation by adding a Bible verse that relates. So you can do the same here. If you have a verse that could encourage somebody that's watching or me, all you got to do is copy and paste that verse in, send, and it'll, it'll join right along with the conversation. So, hey, Marcus, what's up, man? Glad you're watching. Cheryl, hey, Miss Cheryl. Uh, so, yeah, just add a Bible verse. That'd be a good way to dialogue. Um, some praying hands, some of you have already been doing that. And a timely emoji. You know I love emojis. Uh, smiles would be great. Um, sad faces are appropriate if they're appropriate. But just anything you can do to be a part of what's happening here for the next, oh, I don't know, 30 or 40 minutes at the Ensley First Baptist Church prayer meeting. All right. Uh, family update. Let me give you that before we get started. 
I, uh, as I mentioned yesterday in a video, was supposed to fly to Fort Myers. Quickly, I'll do this. I came down with an illness. Mindy took me to the emergency room instead of getting on an airplane. Greatest call ever by her. And um, I've been sick almost two weeks now ever since. I am much better today. I'm sure you can tell. Um, I'm not totally uh, back yet. I, I'm not there yet, but I'm on the way. That's the good news. The bad news is Mindy is in the heart of this thing, and she's still running around here as awesome as she is. She's still helping get all this set up. So Mindy and I are still in the basement on quarantine, trying to keep the kids upstairs, keep them healthy. And so we're trying to ride this thing out. We do not know what it is, but it, uh, I have not, it has not been confirmed or denied. I don't believe it is COVID-19. But it is a nasty sickness, whatever it was, there is. So please continue to pray for us. But it's, it should not impact what we're doing here tonight. And uh, so thank you for all of you that have prayed uh, for us. I know the love has been pouring out. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, so the objective tonight is to glorify God. We're going to glorify God by lifting up his son, the Father, Son, Jesus Christ. And we've already asked in prayer and I'm about to do it again, the Holy Spirit to help us as we go to his word. We're about to go there, so I hope you have your Bible, pen, note paper, whatever you need. Take this seriously. This isn't just like watching television because we're going to God's word. We want to get deep in God's word, and I'll tell you up front as we pray, what we're going to deal with tonight is the issue of fear and death. Fear and death. Okay, so let's pray. Bow your heads with me again. Here we go. Father, we just thank you so much for your word. Thank you, Father, for those who've joined in to be a part of this prayer meeting tonight. As we do our devotion tonight, Holy Spirit of God, I pray that you will take over, that you will fill your servant, that you will fill your servants that are watching, that we would learn together from you, that we would be encouraged, that you would remove all fear. Lord, that we would be to the point in our walk with you, Jesus, for every Christian that's listening, that we would be to the point that we are excited about being with you forever, that we would embrace death as that step through that door to be with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To be absent from the body, your word teaches us, is to be present with the Lord. For us to live should be all about Christ, but to die should be great gain and let our hearts settle on that peace as we go forward. It's in Jesus' name we pray and all God's children said, Amen. Now, if you can say amen, give me an amen, type it in, or give me the praying hands. Let me know you're with me. And here we go. We're going to be primarily in one verse tonight, but uh, we'll bounce around a little bit. But you'll want to turn in your Bible to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. Okay, so we're dealing with the issue of fear. And I ask you the question, does God want us to be afraid? Hey, Amy. Does God want us to be afraid? So, something awesome happened about a year and a half ago. And my dad who, and my mom, very special, I love them with all my heart, special parents. My dad lives in Fort Myers, and, and uh, he was my baseball coach. And uh, so he did something very special that uh, I didn't know for over 40 years. But I was just a little fella, and he was my baseball coach growing up. And, and throughout all of the time I played baseball growing up, I hit – one, is that uno? One, count it, one home run. One over the fence. Just one. Just one. Little fella. And uh, that was, as a kid, one of the greatest days of your life, right? I mean, you're just, you're just amped, especially if it hardly ever happens. So, went on with life, grew up, went in the military. Forty years later, my dad says to me when we were visiting, hey, you remember that time you hit the home run I mean how could I forget so <laughs> so he says you know the baseball and I'm like the baseball he goes I kept 
the baseball. He gave me the baseball. I've got it on my desk at the church in a case. Isn't that special? That's awesome. But I also find that he's doing the older he gets. And my brothers and my sister will testify to this. He's starting to give us his stuff. And at first, you know, I'm scratching my head like, but now I, I think I know clearly that, uh, that I think maybe he's making preparations. I think he's getting ready. And he wants those things that are special to him uh, and special to us to remain with us. But let me say, and uh, battling emotions here, let me say, I will treasure the things that my dad gives me to hold on to. And then I'll probably pass them down. But the thing is, the thing that would make me happiest of all dad mom the rest of my family is for us all to go to heaven and that goes for anybody that's watching we should want all christians listen we should want all of our family members to go to heaven because this life is short this life is very short there's a little phrase in james chapter 4 verse 14 and it says, life is even as a vapor, a vapor. So when I was a kid also, and I would get sick, much as I've been sick here recently, my mom was big on, hold on, she was big on Vicks, Vicks, <laughs> Vicks, Vapor rub. She's still big on Vicks vapor rub. And she would bathe me in that stuff, you know, and then, you know, you're all bound up. And then I'll give credit to Tim Hawkins and to the Holy Spirit. But then you're like, I was a child of the 70s. <laughs> and, the, and the vapors. And, and so you didn't know if you were sick or what was going on once mom loaded you up with Vicks vapor rub. Why do I mention that? Because sooner or later, that, those fumes were gone. Sooner or later, that cold or that flu was gone. Much like this COVID-19, we pray, will be gone. Just like that. That quick. As fast, you know, I just got a cup of coffee before I started. As fast as the vapor or the steam comes up off a cup of coffee, life is short. I'm 53 years old. And I got to tell you, it seems just like yesterday I was playing baseball with my dad. It seemed like just yesterday mom was gooping that stuff on me. Matter of fact, while I was sick this last time, one of the things she says, you know, moms, put the Vicks on. Put the Vicks on. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, we, and my dad even says you put it on the bottom of your feet. I don't know about that. So bottom line is, bottom line is life, say it with me, life is short. What did you say, George? Yes, on the sock, wrap it around your neck, all that stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, Head, you know, everywhere, everywhere. <laughs> Life is short, isn't it? Have a little fun here at the moment. But life is incredibly short. Time is flying, and it won't be long. We don't know if it's tomorrow. We don't know if it's 20 years from now. It won't be long that our heart will stop beating. And so God has sent his son, his only begotten son, to save us so we could go to heaven. It's just really that simple. And so tonight we want, uh, the goal of this is to glorify God and for the Holy Spirit to take through the power of his word fear away. Maybe with a show by a raising of a hand. Is there an emoji you can raise a hand? Or somehow raise a hand. I'm going to raise a hand. Raise your hand if you've ever been afraid of death. I have. I have. At times, not, I mean, not always, but there have been times I've been afraid to die. I, uh, one, one occasion was I had to go do uh, a biopsy. And, um, and I know the Word of God. This was why I've been a pastor at Ensley First Baptist Church. I know the Word of God. I studied the Word of God. I believe the Word of God. 
I've had peace about death. But every now and then, the enemy whispers in your ear and tries to make you afraid, right? Uh, afraid of death. And so I had to wait a period of time to find out the results of the biopsy. And uh, there was no cancer there. But that doesn't mean someday there won't be. I pray there never is. That doesn't mean somebody that's watching this or knows somebody may experience just the opposite. The bottom line is, is a situation like that can bring about intense fear. And God wants to take that away. He, he does not want us to be afraid of that or anything else. And I'm going to mention in a minute, really there's only one you should fear. Only one. It's not a human being. It's God. But at the same time, this same God we should fear and reverence, he loves you with all, he can love, his love is amazing. He loves you intensely. So, so it's easy to, to revere him knowing that he's our Abba Father and he loves us all at the same time. Only God. So all these other things, COVID-19, hey Michael, anybody else I've missed, I love y'all, glad you're watching. Any of these other things that the devil wants us to be afraid of, get behind me, Satan. We have a God that, we have a Holy Spirit abiding in us that overcomes every fear that may come our way. We just have to, we have to utilize the Word of God. We have to, in faith, grab a hold of that. What does the Bible say? Here you go. Mark this verse down. If you're just now joining us, I had asked the people, the, the church family and the guests that are watching to grab a pen, grab a, grab a piece of paper. And George, I'm going to come back and read some of these later. Man, I can't, you know my eyes are bad and and Mindy will catch me up. She's watching in the other room. Keep Mindy in prayer. She's in quarantine as well and lockdown. So write this verse down. What does the Bible say about death? Well, one, in context of what we're talking about tonight, Hebrews 9, chapter 9, and verse 27. Hebrews 9, 27 says this, And as it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment. We have an appointment. We go to doctor's appointments. We go to meetings. We have an appointment. And because the wages of sin is death, we have an appointment with death, each one of us. Now we pray the rapture happens. And Christians, we pray we're out of here. And uh, read 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 through 18. I'm not talking about that tonight. I'm talking about if your day comes to die, where your heart stops beating. One of the saddest moments in my 53 years was when I held my granddaddy's hand uh, and my grandma held his other hand when his heart stopped beating. That was uh, intensely eye-opening to me, made me, mm, it just blew me away. I was just a young man, just went in the military. And so a wake-up call for sure that, that I can't just go through life oblivious anymore I need to seek out God because he's seeking me. He's seeking you as well. And he's helping to see that death is inevitable, inevitable but, but we don't need to fear it if you're saved. You don't need to fear it. It's appointed. So we shouldn't fear death. Not if Jesus Christ is our Savior. Not if Jesus Christ is our Savior. Matthew chapter 10, mark it down, verse 28. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. That is fear God, but no one else, nothing else, not a sickness, not a hurricane, nothing else. So, talking about apostle, the Apostle Paul who wrote to his apprentice, to Timothy, Timothy, uh, Paul was Timothy's mentor. Timothy was timid. He was a preacher that wasn't near in your face as, let's say, the Apostle Paul was, or Peter. Timothy was hesitant. So normally I would cover every verse leading up to verse 7, but not tonight. I just want us to focus in, hone in on verse 7, because the Apostle Paul, Holy Spirit's directing the Apostle Paul to help Timothy, to encourage him, to give him boldness, to help him see that the Holy Spirit, which, which lived inside 
The very soul of, of Timothy was all he needed to deal with this issue of fear. 2 Timothy um, 4, 6, speaking of Paul, and Paul knew a lot about uh, death approaching. They tried to kill that brother multiple times, and he knew it was coming. In fact, in 2 Timothy 4, this same letter, 2 Timothy 4, verse 6, mark it down, Paul says, because he's waiting, by the way, in a Roman jail to die. He's waiting to be executed. And so he's, he's come to grips with just how close death is getting. Just like we need to come to grips with just how close death is getting. Let's not deny it. Let's embrace it. If Jesus is our Savior, let's embrace it. 2 Timothy 4, 6, Paul is ready. For I am now ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. He was ready. Are you ready? And listen, this is why you should share this video because we're putting the gospel out. And there's people that you love that aren't ready. They think this world is where it's at. This world's got nothing for us. It's going to pass away. It's going to burn up. There's going to be a new heaven, new earth. And there's one of two places we're going to spend eternity, either with Jesus Christ in heaven or in hell. And God doesn't want any to perish. He wants to save souls. So share this. We're putting the gospel out tonight, y'all. We're putting the gospel out. Paul's writing to a young preacher. And he was, Timothy was dealing with those fears. And in verse 7, our key verse tonight, this is 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, we find, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. And a sound mind. David Guzik states in 1 and 2 Timothy, there are no less than 25 different places where Paul encouraged Timothy to be bold. As a child of God, we've got to be bold. We've got to be bold. The Father in heaven didn't want Paul to fear. He didn't want Timothy to fear. He doesn't want you or I or myself. He doesn't want us to fear. I remember when I was a, a little boy in the first house I can remember going to sleep at night and I heard a noise up in the attic and it was bats. So my dad came in and gave me a kitchen long spoon and told me it was an elephant gun. I don't know if it helped, Dad, but the bottom line is he was trying to take the fears away until he could get the bats out of there. That was unfounded fear. Them bats weren't going to hurt me. He was trying to calm them fears. Our Heavenly Father doesn't want us to be afraid of things that we don't need to be afraid of. We don't need to be afraid of anything. Only God. Only God. Christians fear, uh, Christian fear of death, it's not from God. What is from God? Well, we see in our verse, His Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit gives miraculous power. I'm going to go through this quickly. Um, it's unleashed, that power is unleashed with faith. And write this little statement down, write this down. Fear and faith can't coexist. I'll say it again. Fear and faith can't coexist. And I've been guilty of letting fear or anxiety get to me even in last week. I'm not perfect. I'm not even close. He's not finished with me yet. But God always brings me back to faith. And we know without faith, finish it. While well, I get a drink of coffee, finish it. Without faith, it's impossible to please Him. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We're to walk by faith and not by sight, right? So we have to keep the faith that will eliminate the fear. Trust God's power uh, in fearful times, like now. Mindy's been talking to me about, it's just strange right now. I mean, everybody's going back to their own location, back to their homes, not just in Pensacola, all around the world. Something's going on. God's trying to get somebody's attention, and he's got mine. How about yours? So we got to start praying. 
just praying, radically praying with discipline, seeking his face day in, day out, because something's going on. And it's an opportunity for Christian, all you Christians that are watching, you born again Christians, you awesome folks, it's time for you guys to get the message out. Get the message out because there are people whose ears are now opening who were closed before. There are people whose eyes are opening who they didn't want to see before. Hearts are softening. People are afraid. And now is the time you can speak that Jesus is the answer to that fear. Amen? So, give me a thumbs up. Give me a big thumbs up if you believe Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, has power over COVID-19. Give him a big thumbs up. Let him fly. Let him fly. A big thumbs up. Does Jesus Christ have power over COVID-19? Of course, the answer is a big yes. You could even give some guns for that one. If you want to put a muscle up, uh, I know George, give me some guns, George. Get, put some muscles up. Come on. Come on, Brandon. Put the muscles up. Jesus is Lord over all these sicknesses. So let's not be afraid of that. God didn't give us a spirit of fear, no, of love, it says here. Best example of this, and I could spend time on this all night, but just a quick example. Jesus, where did Jesus go? Jesus went to the cross to die. He that knew no sin became sin for us. He died on the cross for our sins. He died there, and he rose again the third day. And whoever puts their faith, their trust in him, will have everlasting life. We'll get to that in just a second, but... The best example is that Jesus went to the cross because of love. So if there was any hint of fear in the God-man, love would overcome that in a heartbeat. He, might have been, he may have been tempted to be afraid, but love took him to that cross. Love moved Jesus to the cross for you. Romans 5.8 says this, but God commendeth his love toward us and that while we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. 1 John 4, 18, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. God loves you tonight. And let that love drive out any fear that may come your way. Some of you have family members going through stuff. Some of you have family members that are nearing death. Maybe you're nearing death. Maybe, uh, maybe job situations, financial situations. Stop. Turn to Jesus Christ and let his love drive out that fear. His love for you, let it drive out the fear. We also see here as we bring this home, the Holy Spirit gives us a sound mind. In this dark, fear-filled, demon-infested world, God gives us peace in our mind. And this is where he hits me all the time, that war of the mind. An ability to take thoughts captive. To take thoughts captive, 2 Corinthians 10, 5. Take those thoughts captive, get them out, get those fears out, and replace those negative thoughts. That's why we need to hide God's word in our heart that we might not sin against him. Replace those bad thoughts with the word of God, and it'll drive that fear out. It'll drive the fear out. The idea, and it's not easy, the language is calm self-control. I'm going to tell the truth. In certain situations, especially when my kids are involved, and some could go wrong, I'm tempted to freak out right off the bat, but then the Holy Spirit gets a hold of my heart, and he gives us a calm control to pray through the situation. We, we can come back to him before we just freak out. We don't need to freak out. We don't need to be afraid. Even if it's something, even if it's the worst, even if it's dreadful, pause, go to God, let his Holy Spirit calm your rapid beating heart. We don't need to be in an uncontrolled panic. We keep our minds on God. Mark this verse down. It's one of my favorites, and it helps me deal with some of these tough issues, and it'll help us lead us into prayer here in a minute. Isaiah 26, 3 says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth 
in thee. Keep our mind on the Lord, our eyes on the Lord. We know also for reference, and I'm just going to ask you to mark it down. Maybe some of you could copy and paste it in this link for everybody that watches this now or later. Philippians 4, 6, and 7. And of course, uh, those are powerful verses on the peace that passes all understanding. Now, I don't know, uh, with a show of hands, how many of you have been to death's door? I have. I've been, I've been at it. I mean, I was ready to step through it. Many of you know the story. I'm not telling the whole story tonight, but I was life flighted out of Big Lagoon, baptized again, a dead man, and God saved me. Thanks to my brother, Jason. Thanks to the Holy Spirit. Thanks to everybody involved. Thanks to my wife who went to work. But I've been close to death's door. How many of you have been there? You know, it could happen in a moment. When you get up every day, we should thank God for the day because we don't know if it's going to be a car accident, if it's going to be an illness. We have no idea. But don't be afraid, even if you know it's coming, like Paul did, like Paul's conveying the message to Timothy, or, or if it's a sudden thing that happens, a car wreck, let's say. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Remember these verses. But I've been there. Should we fear death? What have we learned tonight? No. Should we be afraid of anything other than God? The answer is no. Let me tell you what it takes to get all that fear away. Maybe somebody's watching that maybe you're religious. Maybe you call yourself a Christian, but you don't know a lot about the Word of God. Maybe you believe, but you just feeling the need, you're feeling led by God's power right now to go further with God, to step in deeper. Maybe you are saved, but you want to return. Maybe you're like that prodigal son and you need to come home to your father. So if you're a Christian already, memorize the verses that you learned tonight and pray. We're going to get through this, okay? One way or another. Even if we go home, hey, how much better to go home? Right? But if we don't, we're going to be with Jesus. And things, by the way, as we move into time, are likely. We're going to share in God's suffering. This is, should not surprise us. Those that are teaching that we're not going to suffer in this life, or you've heard that, or you've assumed that, that's just not biblical. Read Philippians chapter 1. We're going to share in Christ's suffering in all kinds of ways. So maybe he's getting us ready for that. So, Christians... Just dive in, draw near to Jesus, get close to the Holy Spirit day in, day out. But I want to speak as we bring this to prayer. Maybe you're watching or you're sharing this with somebody that's watching that's never asked Jesus to be their Lord and Savior. And they should be afraid. If you're going to do this life without God, you should be afraid. If you're going to die without Jesus as your Savior, there is much to be afraid of. But God doesn't want that. He does not want that at all. He's... He loves you so much. Let me put this away. I don't need these notes to share. He loves you so much. He, he, he desperately loves you that he sent his only son. The Bible says in, in John 3.16, say it with me, Christian, and those of you that know it, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him, that's the key, believeth in him, for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not, what, perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Christ might be saved. It's a rescue mission by the son of God to save a bunch of lost folks who rejected God. And that's all of us. That's all of us. His love sent his son here to be brutalized, to be spit upon, to, 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 to receive, worst of all, to receive all of our sins, all of humanity's sins, past, present, future. And so Jesus loves you. He loves you, and he came to, to rescue you, a rescue mission, because we were condemned already. The Bible says we're all sinners, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And if you've broken one of God's commandments, you, it says in James 2, we've broken all of them. So... If you ever lied, 
you ever scammed? If you ever smoked dope back before I was saved? I did. If you've ever done, uh, if you've ever done violence to somebody or you had hatred towards somebody, there's so many sins. If you've ever put yourself above God or anything else above God that's idolatry, all those things are sins. And if you didn't one of them, you're guilty before God. Romans 6.23 says, the wages of sin, and here we come back to our topic tonight, the wages of that sin is what? Death. That's why we go to funerals. The wages of sin is death, but the gift, watch the other half of that verse, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, he's the only way. I'm giving you the plan of salvation. Listen to me now. Listen carefully. It doesn't matter which religion. It's not about being a Baptist or a Methodist or a Presbyterian or a Catholic. Just throw that aside for just a second and focus on the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God who came to rescue us. The Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, him Lord of all, and believe in thine heart that God, his Father, hath raised him from the dead third day, Thou shall be saved. Saved from what? Saved from hell. Saved from yourself. Saved from your fears. Saved day in, day out. For with the heart, the Bible goes on to say, confession is made unto salvation. And with, I'm sorry, with the heart of man believes, believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. And the Apostle Paul, who's trying to help Timothy in our devotion tonight, makes it abundantly clear and simple in Romans 10, 13, that whoever, it's not limited, that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, and his name is Jesus Christ, they shall be saved. So my great concern for my family, my great concern for your family, for our children, grandchildren, parents, people we love, maybe you, my great concern is if you've never called out to Jesus and been saved, call out to him, made him the Lord of your life. You call out to him and you should be a, when you do that, things are going to change. The Bible teaches that the old things pass away and all things become new. You become more and more like Jesus. And, and even if you sin going forward, which you don't want to do and God doesn't want you to do, but even if you do, that sin is under the blood. You have the righteousness of Christ. And so, have you called out to Jesus? Share this video, Christian. Please share this video. Share this. We're about to go to prayer. We want to pray for the lost. We're going to pray for multiple things. Here's what you're going to do. If you have a prayer request, you're going to type it in. I know Mindy's watching and some of the other church folks are watching. Let's jot down some of these prayer requests, some of these names that may or may not come on here. If they come on there, jot them down. Take note of them because we want to continue to pray. Now, there's no way in the world Obviously, I can't hear you right now. I can't see this text well enough to, to speak out on every prayer request. So you pray for me as I pray, because it's going to be in many ways general prayers. But you pray specifically for the people that the Holy Spirit has put on your heart. I can see Sonia's John 3, 3, which says, You must be born again to see the kingdom of God. That is a spiritual rebirth. You go from being spiritually dead, it's a work of the Holy Spirit of God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and he gives you new life, new birth. John 3, 3, check it out. The Nicodemus story. So, we're about to go to prayer. I need you to pray for me that the Holy Spirit would lead me because, again, I won't be able to read this. I'm going to bow my head. You're going to listen. You're going to pray with me. We're going to get serious because the world's afraid right now. Um... We need to stop the petty politics. We need to stop with the nonsense and, and being angry with, with folks over nothing. We need, to, we need to start loving each other like Christ intended us to. We need to love our enemies, right? We need to love our enemies. Okay? So bow your head. I'm going to pray. And here we go. Father in heaven, we come to you in Jesus' name. We enter into your gates with thanksgiving, into your courts with praise. All right, church family, you know what we do. Uh, with a boldness, 
No fear. We're not ashamed of Jesus Christ. Lift your hands up. Lift your hands up and pray this. Father, we love you. And we praise you. Hallelujah. Jesus, we love you. And we praise you. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, we love you. And we praise you. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. Lift him up. He inhabits the praises of his children. I need some of the praise, warriors, while I'm praying through this prayer session as we head towards the end. I need you to start praising God. And the Holy Spirit's doing a, a, an amazing thing in all of our homes right now that I cannot explain. Start praising God. Praise you, Jesus. Praise the Lamb of God. Praise the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This is Jesus. Praise the great I am. This is Jesus. Praise the word of God. This is Jesus. It's all about Jesus, and we praise you, Lord. Now, Lord, we ask forgiveness of our sins. And, Lord, we are all sinners. We are all sinners, Lord. We, we harbor things in our hearts. We harbor seeds of bitterness. We get angry. We treat our brothers ugly. We treat some people better than others. Jesus, we've said things we shouldn't have said. We've done things we shouldn't have done. Holy Spirit, open up our hearts to understand the sins that we're involved in so that we can confess those sins right now in this prayer meeting. We want to be right with you before we pray. We know that if we are living in perpetual ongoing sin, you're not going to hear us. So we want, to, we want to make sure that our prayers are not hitting the brass ceiling. We want to make sure that as we pray together tonight that our prayers are being heard because we believe there's power in this prayer meeting. We believe, Jesus, there is power in this prayer meeting. We believe in this prayer meeting and others just like it across the world that you can stop COVID-19. But you are waking the people up, Jesus, and we can feel it. So, Lord, please forgive us of our sins. Show us what that, those sins are. Take a quiet moment. Confess them. Confess the sins and he'll forgive you. He is a beautiful savior. He, he, he says clearly in his word that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Confess them, church. Confess them. If you're not saved, your first confession will be, I'm a sinner, Jesus, please save me. Call out to him. If you want to join this prayer meeting as a Christian, it's really this simple. Say, Jesus, I'm a sinner. I want to go to heaven. Please save me, and he will save you. There's no works you can do. There's no works you can do to be saved. If you need to be saved, call out to Jesus Christ. You can't do enough good things. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. God wants to save you simply because he loves you. You can't earn it. You didn't deserve it. His grace, he wants to save you. If you need to be saved, call out to Jesus. Say this right now. Say, Jesus, I want to make sure I'm going to heaven. Say it. I want to make sure I'm going to heaven. I believe, Jesus, you died on the cross for my sins. I'm a sinner. I believe you rose again the third day. Please save me, Jesus. Please save me, Jesus. Now, all the Christians, including the ones that just joined the body of Christ, praise God. All the Christians, let's keep going. First thing that's on everybody's mind as we've confessed our sins, we, first thing that's on everybody's mind is that clearly this illness that's going around. And, and let's pray for the media. Oh my goodness, pray for the media. Pray that we would join together as a country and not divide and not try to hurt people because of this. Pray that we could, uh, that we could speak the truth in love. Pray for all branches. This is not about politics tonight. This should not be about politics. Pray for, for all of the parties. Pray for the politicians. Pray for the media. Pray for the scientists and the doctors and everybody that's working hard. Pray that we would not have any fear regarding finances. Pray for wisdom for the leaders. Pray for wisdom for the president. And let me tell you, we prayed for President Obama, President Bush, and we pray now for President Donald Trump because the Bible says so. So you need to pray for him too, even if you can't stand him. You're supposed to love him and pray for him. And I'm supposed to love President Obama and pray for him. And we're supposed to love any person that God puts in that office. And God makes that call. So let's knock it off. Father, please, please give wisdom to the political leaders, local, here in Pensacola, Lord, be with our mayor, be with, be, be with our mayor and the county commissioners and, and, uh, and all the, 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 the first responders, Lord, and especially the nurses and the doctors constantly in harm's way. Oh, God, please put a, 
a safety, a hedge of safety around them. Keep this disease off of them. Please, Lord Jesus, be with the medical professionals. Oh, Lord, please, please, please. Lord, be with uh, the emergency managers as they try to help us work through this. Please put a discipline in the, the people as a whole to listen to the instructions we're given, Lord. Give, give the people a desire to, to do what we're told, to wash, to keep our distance, and if we're sick, to isolate, Lord. Lord, all that said, we believe that we need to do these things and pray for these leaders. All that to be said, I am praying tonight, and I'm asking the church family and the friends that have joined us, I'm asking you all to pray tonight. Oh, would you pray with me tonight that God would stop the plague? I did a study in the Old Testament on the plagues, some of the plagues that came forward, and there were three issues involved with all those plagues. One was pride. The other one was rebellion. And the last I noticed that jumped off the page was idolatry. I want you to pray that Donald Trump would speak the name of Jesus Christ, that he would humble himself and turn to Christ with Mike Pence. Pray for those men that they would turn to Christ, that they would turn to Christ, that they would humble themselves, and that they would seek God's wisdom and not their own, and that they would ask God as we are asking God tonight, do you believe that God can stop the plague because we are praying? We are standing in the gap. Jesus is our intercessor. We are standing in the gap, and we're asking the God uh, of the universe who has power over Satan, 1 John 4, 4. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Holy Spirit, we are agreeing together as one tonight that the plague would be stopped. God, oh God, we know you are using it for your purpose. We know you are using it for your glory, for your kingdom. But Lord, please stop the plague. We know our nation is full of sin. We know this world is full of sin. But we Christians don't support that. We pray for the babies that are being aborted. We pray that that would stop, oh Lord Jesus. Let that stop, oh Lord Jesus. We, we know we are trying to humble ourselves, bow our heads, bow our hearts, bow our knees before our God. And we know the nation is filled with sin. We pray for those, Lord, that hate you and don't like you. We pray that their eyes would be open. But Lord, on behalf of the remnant, of those Christians that cry out, please, oh God, stop the plague. And the people said, amen and amen. In Jesus' name and in his power, amen. There's no weapon that's fashioned against us that will prosper. Lord Jesus, we pray tonight for the church, for Ensley, for all the churches that are represented here tonight, for the pastors, for the pastor's wives, for those that already have this COVID-19, that you would heal, that you would heal, you would heal Mindy and I. We've been bound up in this basement for two weeks. For all those that are facing tests and are afraid, take the fear away. For all those that, are, that have cancer that watch this, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. We are not going to give up. And we pray first and foremost that you're saved because, listen, we're all going to die of something. And if God's will is for us to die in such a way, then let's go to heaven. But I believe that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I still believe there's power and the, the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. And I believe you could be healed if it's his will. Call out to him and let's pray for those with cancer and COVID-19 and other illnesses. And let's believe, let's believe the prayer of the righteous men and women that are praying right now. We believe for healing in the might of Jesus, Yeshua, God, the Alpha, the Omega. All you got to do, Jesus, is say the word. Lord, we pray tonight for the churches. We pray, Lord, that we would do our job in this time of testing. We pray that you'd fill us with your Holy Spirit. We pray that churches would not be divided. We pray that churches, Jesus, would not be all about themselves. We, let us not be all about ourselves. Let us join together. Let us meet like this and in small groups, whatever it takes. And there is power as revival is going to sweep through Escambia County and hopefully this country and the world. We pray for our missionaries. And you know who our missionaries are, Inslee. Start praying for them now. Type their names in. 
Pray for our missionaries that we support. Pray for the Southern Baptist missionaries. Pray for the North American Mission Board. Pray for Dr. Nall. Pray for, pray for the, all of the convention as a whole. Pray that God would, would help the Southern Baptists to reach out like never before and strengthen the church and all of the denominations that love you, Jesus, all the born-again believers, we pray, will unite in prayer to gain great victory over Satan. We know that the warfare is won here. It's not with our fists. It's not with weapons. It's not weapons of warfare that we can hold on to. It's this time of prayer when we come together and we ask that you strengthen the angels of God, the holy angels, to go to war against the demons and the fallen angels. We pray this way. Lord, give them power to fight on our behalf, to crush the enemy. Oh, Lord, crush the enemy. Let us submit ourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he must flee from us. We pray, Jesus, this, knowing that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. But, Lord, we want to put the armor of God on and get up every day ready to go to war for you in prayer and in the word of God, speaking the word of God, the sword of the Spirit. Help us to hold that shield of faith up. Get the devil off of us, Lord, and out of our homes, we ask in Jesus' name. Now, what else, Holy Spirit, help me to bring this home to pray? To pray. And listen, you keep praying. If, when this prayer meeting comes to an end, if you think of something, type it in. Just because the amen comes, that does not mean the prayer needs to end. You keep praying. We want to pray for the ministries in the other churches. So if you're from another church, pray for your pastor. Pray for the ministries. This is uh, a lot of Ensley folks. So Ensley, we got some stuff to pray for. Future and hope, lift it up. God is rocking future and hope right along in the midst of the in the midst of the storm, stuff is happening. Pray for Robert Baker. Pray for Ben Vesey. Pray for all the subcontractors. Pray that they have safety. Pray that God would pour in the resources and the money because, Lord, you know that we're going to give you the glory. We're going to give you the, the glory as 15 women at a time. We'll hear the gospel day in, day out at a future home. Pray for Mindy and Sonia as they lead the program. Get Mindy back up, Lord, off the sick bed. This is a straight-up attack from Satan, and please heal my wife in the name of Jesus. She's so awesome to my family in the church. Please bless her and heal her. Lord, please open a future and a hope so we can start really going to war against Satan in that matter. We want to help women struggling with addiction and abuse. We pray, Lord Jesus, for streets. Lift them up, Travis. Lift them up. All you street folks, lift them up. Mark, lift them up. Jennifer and whoever else is watching, street folks, lift it up. Lift up the ministry that God has put on your heart. The homeless in Escambia County, pray they don't get COVID-19. Pray that God puts a hedge of safety around them. And even more so, pray that God would deliver them from addiction. We're going to see a victory yet. We're going to see instead of the zombie apocalypse, we're going to see these homeless folks struggling with addiction with meth, heroin, crack, spice. We're going to see those demons go down in the name of Jesus, and we're going to see Escambia County as an example of the power of God to heal and set the captives free. Please, Jesus, move on streets, waterfront rescue mission. Move on all the ministries like at Epps Center. Uh, Lord, help me not to forget any. Lord, we pray for uh, uh, loaves and fishes. Pray for these ministries in Escambia County. Opening doors. Uh, we pray for Lake, even Lakeview. Let revival happen at Lakeview, Lord, as they minister, Lord. We pray, Jesus, for the other ministries at Ensley, the children's ministry. We lift up uh, our sound guys, Mindy in the praise and worship, Lord. That's where we go forward and more. Pray for, for Mindy in the praise team. Pray for them by name, Mindy. Pray for your people. Pray for them by name that we would have a fire to sing the praises of God as we go to war. Pray that God would protect us and bring us back together soon to pray without having to do it through a phone that we can come back to the battleship finally as i close tonight because really i could go all night i think but i probably need to start heading to this pray for the lost and the prodigal sons and daughters one wants you to put their name up there on the screen then you do it but if not you just pray in private and not only that you be a witness to them send them this video you tell them that jesus is the answer you pray for them. And if they won't listen to you, you pray night and day, day and night, until a breakthrough happens and we're not going to give up. One thing I've learned through the Holy Spirit over the past several years is persistently, relentlessly, do not stop praying for the lost. Lift up your babies. Lift up your grandbabies. Lift up your brothers, your sisters. 
lift up your parents, your grandparents, lift up those that if they died right now would go to hell. And we don't want that, Jesus. You don't want that. We pray you'll do whatever it takes to save souls. We say these prayers tonight in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, my Savior. Thank you for praying with me. You know, I don't have much of a voice, and we end every service because of Pastor Estes, his wife, uh, Miss Ann, who's now in heaven. Years and years ago, before I got there, Miss Ann, she, uh, she came down with leukemia, and the church prayed and prayed and prayed, Endless First Baptist Church, before I ever got there, that she would be healed. And don't you know it, it's not a shock, because God can do it. He healed her and gave her many, many, many more years. And so I was asked when I came, was, when I came to be the pastor at Endless, I was asked, do you want to keep singing victory in Jesus? at the end of every service to honor the miracle that God did with Miss Ann. And of course my answer was yes, absolutely. So I don't have much of a voice. I need Bill Dantzler here, I don't have him here. I don't have Mindy, but it's only right. Here we go, oh victory, you gotta sing with me. Oh victory in Jesus, my savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood he loved me ere i knew him and all my love is due him he plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing blood i love y'all i think we prayed tonight i'm pretty confident i don't know what you're doing <laughs> I don't know what you're doing in your own little place. I see a lot of activity. I have no idea what just happened with you. But I believe the Holy Spirit was with you, and I think great things are happening. Let's keep going forward in prayer. There is victory in Jesus. I love you all, and I'm out.